Everyone, this is three questions with my friend Evan Whitehead. Not the soundboard, man. <laughs> hey, man. You know, I I told like I don't know if you ever seen I have the soundboard, but the one I'm gonna play just for you because you know you know I'm a big Bears fan. I know you're from Chicago, <laughs> right? I, got, I, I always play this for the Green Bay Packer fans that I have, you know, on uh, the thing. <laughs> so, Evan, hey, man, it's, like, awesome to talk to you. And we were, like, we had really kind of become friends. Like, it's, like, like about a year uh, that we, yeah. you know, been, yeah. been friends. And so, uh, we I use this opportunity. We have been, not been able to touch base. Uh, so, we could just kind of talk for, like, about an hour before the podcast. But uh, been watching your journey over the last year and just been amazing to see how many people you've inspired uh, and you've connected with. So, um, you know, three questions, and we talked about this before. You are inspiring a ton of people. You are doing some really incredible things with your focus on, you know, really mental mental wellness, you know, about taking bait, uh, breaks, the boundaries, balances, uh, and, and I'll tie to links to some of your work down below. But when you think about a teacher, uh, in your lifetime that inspired you, someone who like really made an impact, who's like the first person that you think of and why? Um, I would say Rosie Allen. She was actually, um, wasn't my teacher, but she was actually a sponsor for a club um, that we started in high school. And it was the Cultural Awareness Club. And it was literally like all of the students from diverse backgrounds, religions, ethnicities, Mm -hmm. wanted to have a voice at high school. And she took the opportunity to sponsor us and get us going and get us organized. And what she was able to do first and foremost was to uh, be our voice Mm -hmm. and and help us, um, you know, as students that were in a predominantly white school, being able to have a voice and make it structured um, and also You know, she provided a lot of inspiration and hope for us um, as, you know, as high school kids that we can do pretty much anything Mm -hmm. that we wanted. And it was great, you know, for her to do that when she she didn't have to. She could have easily been comfortable as, you know, um, a white woman, you know, in in a school and done that. But she chose not to because she did truly what she believed what was right and supporting all of us. So I got to ask you this question. Like you said, so Rosie, it's Rosie Allen. Is that correct? What, what, what was her role in this? Like, so was she a teacher? Or what, like, so what was her role in the school? She was, she, she was actually a special education teacher. Yeah. Um, so like, it was interesting. Like she wasn't our teacher, but she right. actually supported us, even though that wasn't in her department or her role to do so. Right. And it's, it's actually like, like, I remember I was uh, with a school district and uh, it, was, it was West Alice, right? So West Alice is probably, I don't know, hour and a half from you because it's in uh, like just outside uh, uh, Milwaukee. And it was interesting because I was listening to a student and they actually said that they had struggled with uh, thoughts of suicide and depression. And for years and years and years uh, during high school, and one of the things that they actually said that I thought was really powerful was that the thing that kept them going every single day was a teacher that never had taught them once, right? That never taught them ever, that said hello to them every morning and actually uh, and greeted them by name. And it's like interesting because we kind of always talk about educators that, you know, we like, this is the first time to be honest with you that I had an answer that wasn't like someone who actually taught you, right? But like even within the, and I, I've talked about this concept a million times, the idea of a school teacher, that every kid in the school is ours, right? No matter whether we teach them directly or not. And so that, I love that story because I think it, it shows that the impact, whether you, you teach them directly, you know, kids in your classroom. So uh, do you know where Rosie Allen is today? You know what? Um, she's still kind of in the same community. We have, yeah. we have kept in contact, uh, thank God for social media. Right. Um, she's you know she's doing well and has stayed in contact with me and then also my sister who's eight years younger than me came through and was in the same program so um, really she actually be, was able to watch uh, many households like my own with uh with siblings as okay. well being able to make make a make a connection with them okay evan if you if you're going to share this with rosie allen i'm just going to do this rosie allen shout out 
That's a shout out button. That's a shout out button. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, you've been in administration for a while. I think you are currently, is it, and I know it's like, is it assistant superintendent, associate superintendent? I'm a, I'm a director. So it's the same thing. We only, right. we, we're in a very flat administration. Oh, so gotcha. It'd be, so it's comparable. So you you've worked with administrators, you know, I'm sure you've developed a lot of administrators, but when you actually think of like a really great admin, you know, and it could be at the school, the district level, whatever, who's someone that comes to mind right away and and what 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 made you think of them as as being really great? Sure, I would say it's uh Dr. Steve Humphrey. Um he was superintendent I had back in early 2000s and he really was someone that saw something in me and in a lot of um, people that were moving into from going from teacher leadership to either department chair positions or, you know, eventually uh, school or district administration. And he just had a knack for like seeing talent and cultivating it. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was great about him because he tr always created opportunities for people to um, test the waters that were safe, right? So all these like kind of quasi administrative opportunities that weren't full full admin like land administrator, but giving you leadership opportunities so you could grow, mm -hmm. and it was safe to grow doing so. And it probably what if it wasn't his for his leadership, um, I probably would have never started going in the direction of being in leadership and admin. And it's it's great because he almost has like you know I know you're you're a basketball fan yep. you're familiar with like coaching trees yeah like he literally has like this admin tree I love where that. like people that worked under him at some point in time have gone on to be very successful um so he had you know very very you know good guys um very honest had a lot of good conversations with him just about the realities of of leadership and administration and mm -hmm. and, and what that means and, and moving forward so he's definitely someone that that comes to mind right away and that that's like the you know the, yeah you did you as when you were talking about that that's the first thing I, th I was thinking about right like the you know the coaching lineage all the people that are inspired by uh, that too and it's kind of I, I think a lot of people see that the notion of like leaders don't create more followers they create leaders as like a cliche almost but it it's actually quite true right and you think about just that 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 idea that I, I think probably sometimes and I, I've had this experience. Uh, with some of my administrators, it's not that they just kind of bring out talent to you. So they sometimes make you realize stuff you don't know about yourself, right? Like they see that thing. And I think part of it is kind of when you always are around yourself, right? When you're always kind of by yourself, uh, you don't see it. And sometimes it takes an outsider perspective to kind of point it out and then help harness that. So I, I absolutely love that. And so the last question that I'm going to ask you, and you actually, um, I'm really excited because this is the question that you wrote about in an uh, upcoming book called Because of a Teacher. And you are uh, one of the authors of this book. And I'm excited that you, you are uh, so willing to collaborate, uh, share your story. And you can share the story that you wrote about uh, if you like, or you can share something else. But you talked about, you know, what advice you'd give to yourself as a first year teacher. So when you look back at your career and you look at when you entered education and I, I, we all know there's things we could do better. Right. And that's part of growing in education. Like, what would you tell yourself, you know, if you can go back and talk to first year Evan, uh, you know, in your teaching career. You don't have to be everything for everybody. And, um, people are going to ask that of you, especially because you have uh, a unique lived experience and also professional experience and people are going to pull on you to do a lot and they're going to want you to almost be the savior of many. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't have to do that. You don't have to feel guilty. If you say no, you don't have to, you know, you know, you have a job to do and concentrate on that. And if you can, Right, obviously give a little bit more and some more time, but you don't have to give in to feeling as though if you don't do this, right, you're a bad teacher, a bad educator, you're letting people down. Yeah, and like, you know, I actually got a message uh, from an educator thanking me for sharing some of the struggles that I've had uh, with exactly what you're talking about. And sometimes they don't see that, you know, people will talk about this openly. And I know you've had like a, a really, you know, talked about this in a very personal way. And when, when you talk about that, I know I always felt I tried to go over and above, right? And, and try to help everybody I could. 
and that led me to basically a breakdown where I had to take time off from education and didn't know if I was going to ever return. Uh, and luckily I had really great administrators who, you know, didn't see that as a weakness, but you know, they knew, they knew I needed support. And I think sometimes we get so immersed into that, that we take on other people's problems all the time that we don't necessarily take care of ourselves. And then when we don't take care of ourselves, it just snaps and that's it. And then, and then sometimes that means when we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of anybody. Right. Like that's where the point, and I don't know, have you like, I know you've, you've kind of dealt with that. Right. And you've had conversations about some of the struggles that you've had personally with that. For sure. No, that's, um, you know, that's part of my story, you know, um, as I became more successful and I, and I kind of moved up the ladder in schools and districts in terms of administration, you know, I had the same mindset that I could like do everything for Mm -hmm. everybody. And it didn't change, although the workload changed and the responsibility, right. the mindset didn't change. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, guilt and manipulation that's done, yeah. you know, in schools and in education, it's just, it's the reality of it. You know, a lot of emotional manipulation and some of it, it's not, um, you know, there's no malintent in sometimes, yeah. but sometimes there is, but the reality is that they, you know, People will try to pull on your heartstrings, Mm -hmm. you know, they want something, if they need something, you know, but we got to know that we have to take care of ourselves because at the end of the day, that's all, that's all we have. And most of the time, you know, if something happens, right, then everyone wants to say, oh, you need to take care of yourself. Oh, you need to slow down after the fact. Right. Right. Yeah. It's very, very reactive. Right. So where, where. To me, I always wonder where were you beforehand, right. right? When you could see what was going on. Did you like, you know, as leaders, are we telling the people that, that we serve, that we supervise to slow down? Are we taking right. things off their plate or are we adding more? You know, are we able to recognize when um, there are, you know, educators that are truly struggling, you know, during that time? And I think a good example of this is now what's been happening over the last you know, a little over a year, right? What type of environments have been created that mm-hmm. are conducive to support the overall um, social, emotional well-being and mental health of the adults? Because right now, to me, we're still like, this is still like crisis learning phase one. <laughs> okay, so so we had, you know, we're, we're back in school. Some people are some type of hybrid learning. We really haven't figured it out yet. And we haven't figured it out in a couple of areas. The first one is um, addressing what may be a perceived or an actual like learning loss, Mm -hmm. right? And also the other area is, you know, returning back to school in person in some form or fashion. How do we set that up? What does that look like? How do we build the supports necessary so that people are ready to accept coming back in person, right? Like Mm -hmm. where are people at? you know, mentally, you know, in terms of being able to accept that responsibility. There's been a lot of people that during this time, they haven't left their homes. You know, there's people that, right. you know, haven't ex- been involved in other activities with other people. There's been there's mm-hmm. been educators that have made decisions about whether or not they will return back to the profession that they decided to get into or not. And there's some people that have no choice, right? They, they, they need to work, they don't have the flexibility, their opportunities to walk away, even if they don't feel well or don't want to. And so I think we just need to have that lens every time we think about decisions that we make, um, think about planning for next year, for the upcoming school year, you know, um, what is that gonna look like? You know, do we have supports in place for our students and our, do our educators know? Because it's, it's gonna be a while until things flatten out for the most point in terms of really getting our footing and understanding what school is going to look like Mm -hmm. moving forward. Um, So I think that's, you know, if we can get to a place where we as the leaders um, are able to recognize that and then act on it. And some of that is sharing some of our own vulnerability. So people understand that we, we get it. I think that it'll begin to build that social capital that's necessary 
create to create a uh, environment that's conducive for success. So, the, and like you just said something that really reminded me of you, right? Your willingness to share your vulnerabilities, your willingness to share your story, and all that you've done really puts at the center. And this is something I've been saying for a long time, but you really reminded me of this in your work and my connecting with you is that when you take care of people, stuff will get done. But if you focus too much on the stuff, you will lose people. And I think that to me, I think that's why I really so appreciated connecting with you, uh, really building our friendship over time. And just, I really look forward to watching you continue to continue to inspire people, not only to really kind of take a step back and focus on how they can take care of themselves, but really in that how they do that to take care of others. So if you don't follow Evan, uh, make sure you connect with him and you'll see his uh, details in the description down below. Evan, it was awesome to talk to you as always. You know, I, I love hanging out with you, man. So I, I can't, we're going, as soon as this stupid border is open, we are going to a Bulls game, man. And the Bulls are actually good this year. Like they're well, they're yeah. not. Sorry, sorry. They're like good for the Bulls in the two thousands. There we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> hey, everyone! Thanks for listening, Evan. Thanks for being on the podcast. Have a great day. Peace and blessings.